Hello and welcome to Kittrick Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV Upper Mississippi River Valley and today we're going to be trying something just a little bit different. We're going to be attempting to uh, get auto drive fully automated here and working with the uh, chopper here so that we don't have to keep driving these uh, forage boxes back and forth all the time. We'll see how it works. Now, I don't know if I have to use a worker with auto drive or if it'll do it while I'm driving, but that's what we're about to find out here. Um, I think I need to use a worker though. So this may be a short start, but we're gonna see. And yeah, it says it's waiting for call, which I'm almost positive is only gonna happen if we're in the vehicle. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna put this down. And uh, no, the auto drive worker is coming right over here. Does auto drive work if you're manually doing it? Oh my goodness, this could be quite awesome. Well, look at that. I didn't realize that. Man, you know, it feels like sometimes I have just gotten way behind the times on all the awesome stuff that uh, is going on here in Farm Sim. So I'm gonna go ahead and gear up a little bit here. We're going seven miles an hour, just a booking it here not bad and this driver is doing a great job of keeping up with us even though we've only got the one headland pass open here and this is awesome I can't wait to see what happens when he gets full now and uh, the other driver is going to come in hopefully keep us moving but this is uh, this is a dream come true I've always wished that uh, I could do this with the combines as well where you're driving and the green cart will come and unload you Maybe one day, maybe one day, the auto drive guys will figure out how to do that. Um, just detect if the pipe is out and uh, come and drive alongside you kind of like this. And that would be awesome. Heck, maybe they can do that now and I just never noticed. We're going to have to play around with stuff. We're going to do a lot of corn chopping and the fact that I can actually drive the chopper now is, uh, is awesome. I love doing the actual harvesting. It's the funnest part of all of this. I don't mind carting uh, when uh, the opportunity arises, but I definitely prefer running the harvesters myself. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the four headland passes that we did on the other end. And I'm just gonna follow this curvy bits all the way around here. Hopefully I will uh, not be too far away for the other auto drive cart to come out and get us. We're still gonna have a little bit of downtime, I'm guessing. Uh, until we get this field opened up and like I said once we get the field opened up I think I'm going to cut a few passes out right in the middle of the field so that the auto drive workers can figure out how to go from one end of the field to the other we may even have to look into if there's a driveway on this end of the field or not I don't think there is though but it'd be nice if I could have one of the auto drive workers showing up on one end of the field and the other coming to the other end just so that we've got uh, better coverage but honestly I think once we get down to it um, it won't really matter once we've got a thing cut out in the middle of the field here and, and the carts are just coming in the main driveway. Well I've got a lot cut down on this end already uh, but because auto drive is kind of following me along here I think what we're going to do is just get to the end here and then I'll lift up and spin around I'm hoping when I lift my header up here in a second like so will the auto drive worker stop trying to follow me uh it doesn't look like it all right we're gonna we're gonna run him into the ditch maybe as I try to get turned around here real quick and I'm gonna start right back here on the corner heading back up the way we were heading and let's see if he's going to figure out how to get over here to me. Now, this cart might be a little weird because we do have that high side on it. I'm really hoping that it decides to come to my left side, despite having that high side on the cart, which it is through a very off-road means, but it figured it out right quick there. And we're going to miss a few stocks here. Uh, actually, let me see if I can back up a bit and get that looks like the 4440 is gonna try and figure out how to back up to probably a mistake 
And like I said earlier, having the high side on this thing is kind of inconvenient. I wish it was, I wish I'd configured that differently, but because it's a leased piece of equipment, I can't change it until we uh, get around to having enough money to feel like buying it. That's all right. Given uh, how well everything else is working here, it's the smallest thing to complain about. All right, it looks like he's full. And so that guy's going to take off and head back up to the farm. And if I pop open the map, here is the other driver. Going to try and get out here. Let's tab over here. I didn't actually turn him on. So I'm going to turn him on. We're going to head back over here. Let's see if he uh, figures out how to get over here. It looks like they're both moving. I'm going to zoom in here on the big map for a second. Yeah, you can see the uh, 7810 is mm, doing something I probably don't want to know about. So real quick, I'm going to see Restrict Pathfinder to Field Boundaries. Yes, let's do that. Can I do that? Uh, I don't want to do that on my vehicle settings. Where's my global settings? All right, I'm going to turn both of these to yes, but I think I need to... Whoops apply that let me switch over to the 7810 and see what the settings look like now uh yeah see these are vehicle specific so we're gonna apply both of those and i'm gonna do the same thing here just so that we hopefully won't run into a ton of issues all right with all those shenanigans out of the way i think uh I think we've got this sorted out. I think we found the settings that are going to keep auto drive on the field, hopefully. There should be some epic bloopers this episode with uh, tractors going crazy in these ditches. Despite the minor problems, I would say chopping's going pretty good. I'll be curious to see how well this works out after this round when we've got the um, other tractor coming back seeing how it parks and at what point it starts heading out here to catch up. And the 7810 is uh, getting a little more confused than the 4440 did. That's all right. He's figuring it out at least. I think it's when the headland gets really narrow, like in some of these places, he's trying to cut back in behind me. Luckily, I can throw this chaff pretty far here, and that's uh, why we're taking so many headland passes. Once we spin around here and start working on the next pass, I think it's going to get even easier. Let me shut that down and see what he does. And we're right back off to it. All right. You know what? I can live with a few little oddities like that. I'm not too worried about the fact that he's struggling on the headland here. I think it's going to work even better once we get going on the up-down rows. So we'll uh, we'll just get things opened up here. Stop uh, worrying about it so much. We've probably got that cart almost, uh, I don't know, half full or so again, which is awesome. By the time we make it back down here to the other end of this headland pass, we're going to be probably having him full. And that's why I'm really curious to see if our other guy's already on his way back up here. So he was able to f successfully unload his entire wagon into the harvest store without interaction. It means we've got things set up, I believe. I guess time will tell if he's actually uh, emptied it or not. He could come all the way back up here and still have a full load. Wouldn't be the first time that I've seen something like that happen. But yeah, I could see myself upgrading to the straight axle version of these forage boxes because there is at least uh, one size, if not two sizes up that are bigger than this, holds more volume, which would be amazing. I would love to be able to maximize uh, our efficiency here. Uh, it looks like, though, even, with, uh, even if I didn't have the shenanigans trying to get... Uh, the driver to work and stuff. I'm pretty sure that 4440 would have been back to the field here before I got uh, the 7810 full here, which it looks like he is now full. 
so I'm just making sure, but yep, it's he's driving back up to the other end of the field here. He's going to try and uh, stay on the field and not drive through the crops. Bonus points. Thank you, sir. And if I look here, it looks like the 4440s are already starting to head down towards us. I'm slightly worried that they're going to run into each other as they get going here, but that's all right. We'll see what happens. The true test of if we took enough headland passes off or not. It looks like the 7810 is hugging the crops and the 4440 is hugging the uh, grass line there. So this may just work out after all. Yeah, yeah, hugging the grass line, the ditch. I don't know where he just went. Oh, there he comes, right back up out of the ditch. Well, you know, I have to give kudos to uh, DJ Modding that these are just shallow enough that my crappy uh, automation can uh, drive right back up out of them. So <laughs> we're doing good, we're doing good. It would be nice if they uh, stayed in the field boundaries just a little bit better, but... Once we get the field cut through in the middle, <laughs> that should uh, reduce how much stuff like that happens, I guess. I wonder if I start cutting through, if the 4440 will follow straight behind me, like a, um, I guess a more normal setup would do, or if he's going to try and drive beside me through the crops. That's the big question. I'm kind of curious to test it out. Um, I did want to go to the other end to do that, though. I want to cut through right where the driveway is uh, to make the pathfinding a little bit easier. So I think what we might do is actually follow this along the straight edge over here to make sure we've got sufficient headland passes on this far end along the other ditch here. And then once we get back up to the... I don't even know the west end of this field. Well, it's not the west end because this map is upside down, so that would be east, even though by a conventional map it would be west. So I'll just say once we get back up to the field driveway, we'll uh, cut through this field and take a path all the way down from right where the driveway is. And then as we widen that up, going on either side that will allow the workers to have a nice clear path for pathfinding here and this is exactly what I was worried about is the course player the <coughs> the auto drive guys not being able to pathfind when it gets real narrow here with the two lanes we need to get to four lanes for the pathfinding to really be able to do its thing Oh, he thinks that I'm cutting through, so he's just going to tailgate me. Well, that's awesome. I guess we kind of have an answer on how that would work when we're cutting through. I wish he wasn't quite pushing on my back end, but I'm sure that's uh, probably one of these vehicles just not quite being set up. It's probably the weights that he's got on the front that aren't uh, part of the vehicle size collision there. There's probably a setting for how close... Okay, stop. Distance kept from combine if following from its rear. Let's try this. Uh, still a little close. Let's see. I wish I knew if it was this driver or this driver that I needed to adjust for that. We'll adjust this one and see what happens. I'm going to move it back to 2.5. I could really use a visual indicator of some kind just to make sure that it's actually getting adjusted. But 2.5 seems like quite a bit. And oh yeah, he's actually keeping a little bit of a distance now. That's nice. I could probably stretch that out just a little bit more. But we're gonna run with this for right now. I know these guys do follow ridiculously close at times. I feel like we're just a little bit closer than ridiculously close. There we go, and I am going to spin out here. Oh, he's following me. All right, let me spin around this way, maybe, and see if he can figure out how to catch back up with me. I know I said I wanted to go do the driveway bit, but I want to get enough of an opening here that this guy can do his thing. Um, let's see. 
I want to make sure that they can get around on this edge, and I feel like we're going to need four passes on anything that we do to make sure that the workers can do their thing. So he's catching up now. I'm going to get the driving going. There we are. Good times, good times, and he's almost full, so that'll be nice. All right, well, it looks like that guy was full, and he decided to take the long way around the field while this other guy came over here to start unloading me. So I guess no complaints. It didn't quite look like he was full yet, but maybe he just hit some kind of a threshold, and because we were in an awkward spot, he decided to go empty instead. I'm a little bit nervous about him taking that long way around the field over there to get to where he needs to go. That's going to take him a long time. This field is very big, very treacherous. But I guess we'll be screwing around a little bit here with getting the uh, two headland passes off on this end. And then we can go open the field up. And that will keep us going for a bit. I'm hoping this guy has enough uh, capacity for us to finish this up. He's getting over because there's this one stock there, and he couldn't detect a lane wide enough to come follow behind me. Oh my goodness. Okay. You, sir, need to be trained on the appropriate follow distance as well. So I think I was at 2.5. We're going to go to 2.75 on this guy. And I'm just taking a little bit off on the corner here and give us a little bit more room for turning around and stuff. And I'm going to go right back up that same side. We're going to widen this out one more pass just to make sure we've got enough for pathfinding. And I'm going to wait here for him to figure that out. Unless he's planning to back up the entire way down the field here, which I don't think he is. We've got a few missed stocks here and there. I hope those aren't going to mess with the pathfinding too much. Based on the cart's behavior and that he's following behind me again, I'm going to say it's probably causing a little bit of an issue. So we might take one empty pass down here just to clean up all those stocks. I really should have gotten the GPS going sooner to make sure we were going nice and straight and not leaving stragglers off and on throughout the rows here. But uh, it is what it is. Can't always uh, be perfect. And a quick look at the map. It looks like our other auto drive guy did make his way back up there to the farm and is unloading already. So I've got no complaints. This guy is uh, working good. Came back empty. That guy's over there doing his thing. I can see the cart up there at the farm unloading into the harvest store. This has been a very successful automation here of uh, our grain cart drivers, or our, our forge box drivers, I guess I should say, while we're manually driving the chopper. Man, I'm loving this. We're just going to run down this one line here where there's some uh, stocks that we missed, invisible stocks and stuff. It seems to be messing up with the pathfinding. It's a little bit of a waste of time, but when I look at the size of this field and how long I'm going to want the automation going out here, I think it's worth our time to just do the little bit of cleanup here necessary to make sure that our pathfinding and automated workers are going to be able to do their thing uh, because I don't want to necessarily do all of the work in this field manually. I would love to uh, just hire a worker and have... Uh, the chopper running here without me as you can see there's just the little bit of an invisible row here that we're harvesting up as we come down here that was causing problems because the pathfinding detected it even though we couldn't see it so now that i've got most of that all picked up here and chopped this guy should be good to go i'm gonna spin right back around here i'm gonna see if there's a little bit of that same behavior right here yeah that's what i thought there's a few stocks not a lot we're probably wasting the corn but i'm not too worried about the actual volume of corn there it was more about the pathfinding 
And so now that we've got a lot of that out of the way, I'm going to just get turned around here. And we're going to pick things up and head back up to the other end of the field. One last trip here. And then we will cut through like we've been talking about and really set this field off on some good automation. All right, we are finally at the other end of this field. I think what we're going to do is finally head down here to the driveway and try and cut through. We've taken out plenty of rows all the way around the field here. And it looks like he's going to try and follow me down the headland pass here. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue as I need to turn to my left to get into the row here. Maybe if I turn off of the forage harvester, he'll stop following me. No? Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to try and uh, just swing a wide here out to the right. Maybe we can uh, get around in front of him and turn into the row here. We've got this little corn stalk here right by the driveway that I don't want it messing with pathfinding. We've seen quite a few pathfinding issues here. And oh, this guy's just in my way. Let's spin around and see if I can get behind him here. And of course he's going to back up into me. Why wouldn't he? Alright, I've got a GPS track already set up here from the other side. So we're just going to grab a row here. Help if I could get on there straight. Let's uh, back it up here. Stupid gears, keep forgetting about those. There we go. And hopefully he can uh, follow along behind me here. Oh, we were just saying, I don't think this guy's, uh, I don't think the auto drive guys have gotten stuck yet, but it looks like we've finally gotten stuck. Let's see if we can fix this guy. Oh, 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 uh, he's got it. We didn't have to do anything. All right, all right. My, my pardon, sir. We're going to get back in here and keep driving. You've got this all sorted out. All right, let's see if we can make it down to the other end. We didn't have an empty cart here, but oh my goodness, he's going to keep rear-ending me. Let's uh, make the distance adjustment here that we made on the other guy. We're going to get this guy up to 2.75. I think that's what we had the 7850 at. Should work out a touch better. And like I was saying, let's see if we can get to the far end of the field here. We've got a full... Uh, <clears throat> we're, we're not full yet on this forage box, so hopefully it's going to work out here for us. And if we look at the map here, you can see the 7810s already coming back. And we've got to get through this field. Hopefully, as we cut through a few passes on this field, that's going to leave a, a lot of room here for the uh, workers to go up and down in the middle of the field, as opposed to some of those AI paths where they were driving all the way around the outside edges of the field there. I mean, this field is huge. And we want to try and uh, make their lives a little bit easier here. All in all, though, I have to say, this has been uh, working out pretty good. No complaints. We're rocking and rolling here on and getting our silage all wrapped up. And when I say all wrapped up, I mean we're really just getting started. But I think the goal here by cutting through is that we're going to be able to uh, set the workers up and just have the workers go all on their own. And uh, I'll probably end up doing the spot to our right here with all of the squirrely rows on my own. And then we'll set the normal worker up to tackle the bulk of this field to my left. We've definitely proven that these carts are able to go up to the harvest store on their own and do their thing without our interaction. So I think if we can uh, just keep trucking on this part, get things uh, finished, getting things opened up, that we'll be in a good spot. And I'm just going to turn right back in here on the row. We've got GPS all set up. Oh my goodness. If we could turn right, we'd have GPS all set up. Let's see if we can get straightened out here. Nope, we're still missing a row. Oh my goodness. Back it up. This manual gear shifting thing is uh, catching up with me again. Now, the real question is, when this 4440 fills up on our way back down here, what is the uh, other driver going to do? Are they going to collide in field, or is the other driver going to end up going all the way around the outside of this field to catch up with me? 
definitely looking forward to getting a nice wide section cut out of the middle of the field here to help the AI workers out a bit. And it looks like he's all full here. Let's get stopped. He's going to uh, back up, apparently, give him some room. I don't know why he's backing up as opposed to just pulling forward, but the... Uh, Auto drive guys sure do know how to back these carts up really well. I'll have to give them props for that. And it looks like he's found a way to uh, get back out of this field. Apparently there was no clear path that he could find. So he's just going to hightail it through the uh, corn stalks there. You know, I'll give auto drive credit. It's been trying really hard to uh, stay out of the crops. But apparently every once in a while there's only so much you can do. So... These guys are going to go crazy just driving through the corn. I hope the 7810 doesn't hit me. Oh, he's going to veer off at the last minute. Good deal. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's some wonkiness, but it is what it is. I think we've made a lot of progress, and I certainly wouldn't want to be trying to do this field solo without using auto drive. I think uh, what we were doing would have taken uh, weeks of my life to finish harvesting this field so i'm excited that auto drives are working as well as it is and yeah we're gonna keep trucking on this and next episode i'm gonna really try hard to get this fully automated so that we can jump into some other activities and mix it up a little bit so that we're not just doing uh, a forage harvest for the foreseeable future i think that uh, we've proven that auto drive for the most part is going to be able to handle this automatically and we'll uh, jump into another job. I've got a couple ideas, but I'm not quite sure what we're going to be working on. Uh, so we'll keep uh, we'll keep going here. We'll probably do some of this off camera just to move things along. And we'll catch up with you next episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. That's all for today. Ketterk, out. Oh, he's trying to get onto my left side? Oh no, don't do that. What? <laughs> Where are you going, man? Let's uh, tab around here. Oh my goodness. There we go. Let's see if we can uh, get going now. Where did that guy go? Come back. <laughs>